for example. And, in fact, a friend of mine who owned a small dairy in Waco started labeling his products uh, RBGH-free. You know, they do not contain the growth hormone. Even that's illegal now because they consider it unfair competition well, to the products the, that do use the hormone. Yeah. Monsanto uh, sued this little dairy owner, and uh, it was finally settled out of court. But he was, was then allowed to put that on his labels. Uh, but imagine a big corporation coming down on, on a little tiny dairy. Especially uh, how threatened they are by they, they <laughs> information. Are really and then the movie I Love Trouble came out, and it was all over for the bovine growth hormone because... Uh, I didn't see that. What was that about? Oh, it was Nick Nolte and Julia Roberts, and it was hilarious. It was all about uh, Monsanto. They called it Chess Chemical in the movie. And it was the company that produced the bovine growth hormone and uh, aspartame. Oh, interesting. Yeah, they even said... Uh, oh, yeah, they're the makers of NutraSweet. <laughs> and Nick Nolte said yes. So um, it, it was very funny and tongue-in-cheek, but all this intrigue and, and scientists losing their lives and, you know, that sort of thing. Oh, I just not the scientists lose their jobs when they start uh, their protest? Mm, well, in the movie, in they the movie, they did, yeah, in the movie right. they didn't. And so sometimes movies imitate life. And that's, that's a very funny, very good movie. By the way, if you ever have a chance to rent it, I love trouble. All right, and it's it's about the industry that we're we're going up against, and actually, we're not going up against the industry or Coca Cola or Pepsi or Dr Pepper. You know, I used to do ads for these people. I wrote copy for Diet Dr Pepper when it was sweetened with saccharin, and introduced Diet Dr Pepper in their Las Vegas convention back in the late sixties, I believe. You were in advertising, huh? Yeah, I was in advertising. Uh, I, I'm a journalist. That's that's how I came at this through a journalism background. And so I'm not against those people. I've got a lot of friends in the industry. And uh, they mistakenly think I'm trying to put them out of business. Not at all. You're trying to protect the safety of the consumer to at least make an informed choice. Because if you want to take a poison, fine. It's a free country. That's right. But just know if you're taking a poison. These effects are cumulative. It's not that you can have a safe dose under 50 or 20 milligrams or whatever it is. It's just that day after day after day after day, these things, the effects accumulate in your system, correct? Right. And, and people ask me all the time, how many Diet Cokes do I have to drink to get a brain tumor, which is so ridiculous. I mean, how many cigarettes do you have to smoke to get a heart attack or lung cancer? Uh, nobody knows. And in each person's case, it, because everybody's physiology is different, um, it's, it's a different amount. In times of stress, your immune system is compromised just by the stress alone, so that uh, that period of time in your life, you would be more susceptible to, uh, to the, the toxins in this substance. At other times, if your immune system is, is just plugging along, you know, and in good shape, it can maybe fight, fight it off as long as it can. So it's, it's been called a systemic poison by some of our scientists, which means that it can affect every, um, every organ of the body. It affects and invades the cells of the body and the cellular structure. Um, so that is why it can cause all these many, many symptoms, 92 symptoms on the symptom list. Do you want to list some of those symptoms? And you quote um, one doctor saying, when you harm the brain, you harm the very expression of oneself. Mm -hmm. You don't want to harm your brain at any cost. That's that's why your body protects your brain with a blood-brain barrier and and all of this. That's That's why you need this for your own mental health and happiness. We're a country about pursuing happiness as an inalienable right. You know, why are we, why is it that you know, lawmakers change the laws so they can follow the letter of the law, but not the spirit of the law, mm-hmm. and they're not protecting the American people, which is their mandate. And they're, why don't they go back to Monsanto and say, gee, hmm, these lab results, yeah, I know this is a big business, but why don't you go back to the lab and try to create something that doesn't create these results? Mm-hmm. Um, well, you're absolutely right. Why don't they? Why haven't they? Well, now that they've lost the patent, their patent has expired, uh-huh. um, they don't really care, I think. The Money's been grabbed, the harm's been done. What do yeah. they care? And, and they've gotten their millions and billions. And, and I thought Monsanto sold this off to Well, they company. did. They've gotten yeah. out of it. See, G.D. Searle got out of it by, by selling to Monsanto, and then Monsanto got out of it by selling to the Child's Group in Boston. Let me give you, you asked for some of the uh, yes, things, please. the manifestations uh, of aspartame poisoning. And let's talk about the psychological symptoms, first of all. These, these are reported psychological symptoms. Suicidal depression, panic attacks and anxiety, manias, sleep disorders. Uh, one of the things in, uh, in aspartame is ser- it blocks production of serotonin. Phenylalanine is 50% of the molecule, and aspartic acid is 40%, but those break down into methanol, 10% by weight, wood alcohol, uh, which blinded and, and caused death in prohibition times. And it, it also, that breaks down into formaldehyde, formic acid, the venom in ant stings, and dicetopiprazine, the brain tumor agent. 
So there are many breakdown products that are problematic. And one of the reasons uh, these breakdown products are problematic is because one of the things that they do is break down the function of uh, the brain in producing serotonin. Serotonin is what keeps our moods level. It keeps our sleep patterns normal. And in women, it regulates the menstrual cycles. And so serotonin is a very important neurotransmitter, which is blocked uh, when, when aspartame is taken. So you've got sleep disorders. You have severe mood disorders. People describe rages when, when they, uh, one man called into a radio show and said that whenever he chewed the gum, he felt just a heat rising in his body. He said he could almost feel the, the heat coming up through his body. And, and when it reached his head, he said he just wanted to explode. A, a rage. Now think about road rage, which wasn't prevalent uh, 30, 40 years ago to the extent that it is now. Mm. Uh, people are, are going into rages in their department store because they have to wait in line, you know, for a cashier. Uh, just very bizarre things are happening. So mood swings is, is one of the things it causes. It causes a brain chemical imbalance in the, the serotonin and other neurotransmitters. Uh, a brainwave malfunction that actually shows up in the electroencephalograms of children. Uh, a brainwave malfunction yes, that shows up yes, in the... Yes, it spikes the EEG brainwave activity in uh, mm-hmm. children with epilepsy. So let's give them this drug to right. cause these, and then let's give them little M to calm yeah. them down. These poor kids don't have a chance, but go ahead. Yeah, well, you're right, and it's, it's pathetic. And when you really stop and think about it, like I do all the time, uh, it, it, it just makes you sick. It, it also has the ability to cause personality disorders because it is, it, remember, it is a drug. It has hallucinogenic effects in some people. Uh, it causes aberrant behaviors in some. Now, people will say, now, why does it do all of this? And, and I, I have to say that one of the things, one of the components, uh, breakdown products, is methanol. It's alcohol. So think about people and their tolerance to alcohol, and, and methanol is way worse than any cocktail you would ever have. But um, question here, if you drink a cocktail, you're taking a whole lot of alcohol if you're chewing some right. gum. It's just a tiny, tiny bit. Isn't right. there a, well, a scale? I'm not trying to defend the stuff, but... Isn't no, scale here in that? alcohol in, in a cocktail is ethyl alcohol. This alcohol is wood alcohol. They used to call it sterno. Uh, people put it in, in uh, containers to uh, heat food with on camping trips. It, uh-huh. it, two teaspoons can kill you. Two teaspoons a pure, can kill you. A pure methanol can kill a person. And if there are 250 milligrams of uh, aspartame in a diet drink, for example, that means there are 25 milligrams uh, of that or methanol. But think about fetal alcohol get into this and how do you keep doing it day after day? I got into it because my daughter, my youngest child, became ill and it was a very mysterious thing to us. She was uh, suffering chest pains, heart attacks, like symptoms. She had migraine headaches. Um, eventually she passed out or had a grand mal seizure as her teacher described it to me on a school field trip. Mm-hmm. And so I took her to specialists and couldn't get any good answers and I had a good doctor so I just parked on his doorstep, uh, essentially, and told him, I said, look, I'm not going away. I need answers to this. So he went to the medical school, and he pulled down one uh, study that showed a woman had seizures on it, but she drank a gallon a day of crystallite or, or whatever it was that she was having tea, I think, with, with NutraSweet in it. And my daughter was drinking crystallite because it had just come out that year, 1985. And uh, it came to us as sample packets in the mail through the post office. And I started buying it at the store when it was available, and then on November 3rd, she had her grand mal seizure. So my doctor said, I can't sit in the evening at the medical school and look up all this, but he said, I believe you. I think something is going on here, and, and if you want to go and use my account at the, at the library um, at UT Southwestern Med School, then you're welcome to do it. It was a good solution on his part. It was excellent. I mean, doctors, when they're good, are great. And he admitted that he didn't have all the answers, and, and neither did I, but he said, here's where to go to look. And so I did, and with the help of a neuropharmacologist researcher who was a neighbor and friend of mine, um, I spent lots and lots of time in the medical school library pulling up all these, these studies prior to the time the studies got adulterated hmm. uh, in the 80s because of, of the monitoring. Oh, they were already on the books because yeah. of the failed attempt to get it through during the Carter administration. Well, no, mm-hmm. not necessarily. They were on the books because amino acids had been tested before there was ever an aspartame molecule. Uh, phenylalanine uh-huh. was well known and, and documented in the history of uh, medicine as, <laughs> as causing some of these symptoms. Aspartic acid caused holes in the brains of lab animals, and the third generation of pups in the lab were born uh, sexually dysfunctional and morbidly obese. 
Mm-hmm. And so it changed the DNA in the lab. 